Hello and welcome. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for tuning in today. Today we're going to be continuing our test drive of the Drobo products and we'll be starting a new test drive of the Drobo 5N which is their uh, new uh, prosumer network attached uh, Drobo. It hooks up to a, a gig ethernet connection. So we'll be uh, putting that through its paces over the next uh, several months. And uh, so we wanted to report on our initial setup. So to do that, let's pull up the user interface. And you can see here that uh, it's plugged in well to our lab. We've got our uh, workhorse uh, B1200 uh, and our uh, other main file server, a B800FS. And here you see the new uh, Drobo 5N. It's a five drive uh, Drobo network attached as the N would imply gigabit Ethernet. Uh, it also has a uh, acceleration tier built into it kind of like the B1200 but not uh, the same uh, capacity and things like that. The, to keep costs down for this market uh, Drobo decided to use a MSATA uh, connector and so the the there's a 64 gig MSATA card that we installed into the system uh, very affordable certainly less than a hundred dollars and gives you a, a nice uh, bit of acceleration uh, and then to that because we're trying to stay relatively uh, high on performance here we installed uh, uh, five uh, Seagate constellation uh, drives so uh, higher speed higher performance uh, drive. So let's take a detailed look at the Drobo. You can see here that I've already set the username and uh, everything, the supervisor name. I've kept it the same so that way I can log into all my various Drobos uh, with the same uh, user information if I need to. The System information here tells me the configuration. Um, accidentally, the manufacturer who I ordered the the drives from uh, accidentally sent me a two terabyte drive, so I guess I need to call them. Uh, but uh, what should be in it is completely one terabyte drives. From a performance perspective, really shouldn't matter. Uh, a um, this is, if all the RPM speeds are the same, performance should be about the same. Um, from a uh, the, uh, but the one thing that is interesting, you'll notice that Drobo intelligently uses as much of this capacity as it can. In other arrays, you'd be you'd sacrifice a terabyte of storage. Uh, the other thing is we've installed the MSATA uh, card, so you can see that showing up here. And again, we used a 64 gig uh, card. You can see the health of the system is good. The interface is active. Everything. This will give me details on the different drives if I need to go in for some reason. And this gives me details on the network, how it's configured. From a capacity perspective, you can see that uh, we've used, uh, just to get things started, we copied a few things. I moved the uh, a lot of our client videos and things like that over to it. Uh, and then I have uh, uh, quite a bit of capacity left. This is a system that we're going to use uh, in my home. Uh, it's a prosumer unit, obviously. And so... Uh, it also is going to store my iTunes libraries and, and things like that, cause, which actually the timing is good on because I'm actually running out of space there. So you can set up shares. It comes uh, default with a public share, which makes for uh, you know quick, easy uh, copies. Uh, so if I, you can see I've already got it mounted on the desktop here, and I can uh, have all my different. Uh, I've got some backup directories in there, and we'll. We'll use this uh, as a primary storage area as well. Uh, the uh, to create more shares, let's say for example, I wanted a share uh, just to myself. I could do that. So I'll go ahead and create a new user. Um, I did that by I don't want to go too fast here. Uh, by going to shares, going to share settings, and in here I can create new shares or I can create new users. I'll create a new user first. And I'll confirm 
So there's the new user. You can see it, auto, it default attaches to public. But again, let's say I wanted to create a share just for myself. I create, I just go in here to shares. You can see I can also enable time machine support. So if I want to do backups to this, I could do that. So there's the share created. I can go in and decide if everybody has access to it or just me. Very intuitive interface, by the way. Quick way to get these things set up. I haven't read the manuals or anything like that. Uh, it was fairly obvious. So with those settings uh, all correct, we'll go ahead and create the share. And there you can see that the share is available. So we'll go ahead and mount it. And then we're all set and ready to go. So the... Um, so those two shares are now created. Uh, one last thing, let's, uh, a couple last things, just a quick tour of the, the tools area. Here's where we check for updates, uh, reset it back to um, original settings. We can uh, shut it down, restart it. And as far as general settings, I can set things. On this system, again, since it's more of a home system, uh, I'm not going to do the dual drive redundancy. Um, but if I was going to use it in more of a business setting, uh, I would check that box. Uh, how soon do I want the drives to spin down? Uh, I'll set that for an hour of inactivity, and uh, there's your settings to dim the lights. From a network perspective, I can change the name, change the work group it's associated with, uh, how I want the IP address to be set up, things like that. Administration, again, I've set up the password already. And then finally, alerting. Uh, do I want to disable alerts or enable email alerts? I can have it email me alerts if I want to. Uh, it does a good job through the dashboard interface of alerting, so I don't tend to do that. So that's, uh, that's a quick tour of the interface. Very easy to set up. The only thing I would recommend is that if you are an existing Drobo customer, is to, when you download the new software, deinstall, go through the uninstall process to get rid of your old versions of the, soft, of the Drobo dashboard and let it reinstall uh, these versions, uh, this new version, uh, so you get a good clean install. That, that uh, should take care of any major problems. Uh, one last thing is to show attaching through a Windows machine, so I'll show our uh, Windows VM here. Uh, you can see I have a bunch of different things on my network. Um, here's the Drobo automatically shows up. I don't need to go to a specific IP address or anything. You can see the two shares show up. I'll go ahead and just tap into public here and you can see I have all the different um, files already there and ready to go and uh, anything that would make sense uh, to a uh, Windows box I'd be able to read. So initial test, very very easy to set up. We had it certainly up on the network in uh, no time at all. Um, and now I have a uh, uh, little under four terabytes of capacity to use. Uh, the other thing I will say that I think is important from a, uh, a home uh, or prosumer type of product, small office type of product, uh, is that the unit is incredibly quiet. Uh, you could have this running desk side, and, and I doubt very seriously you could, uh, would even notice it's there. Uh, and the light dimming feature is another good uh, touch for the home prosumer small business market as is the um, drive spin down. So uh, I think the Drobo took great care in making sure that they were being attentive to the market this is addressed for, uh, yet at the same time offering very good performance. Uh, we'll show some of that in some upcoming test drives. For right now, this is George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for tuning in.